guys, it's Jen. Today I am going to be showing you something that has been highly, 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 highly requested throughout my influencer life <laughs> and that is how to film and edit on your phone. So if you're balling on a budget and you want to start creating videos, I got you. I'm going to get into it now and I'm going to talk about editing and how I started. Now I only really have experience with an iPhone so I'm really sorry Android users. I I really don't. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. So I'm going to be showing you from an iPhone perspective what I used. So I have some notes in my book here so that I won't forget anything. Um, I That's another thing as well I got asked is how do you keep like motivated and things like that as well. I always carry a notebook with me or obviously notes on your phone. Um, if I have an idea or anything like that, I write down straight away because it'll go out of my head. So I just keep like writing things down and like that's how I stay abreast of things in my little diaries. First things first, I'm the realist. First product I'm gonna speak about is more for doing kind of social media, Instagram stories, Snapchat, things like that as well, where you might want to be hands-free the reason I'm saying it's just for this is because this will cover your back camera so you'll only have the use of your front camera and for filming actual videos for the grid you want to use your back camera because it's higher quality and that is the Slick Protect phone cover. This is so 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 useful. So it has kind of a silicone on the back of it and it sticks to any smooth surface so just for the sake of the fact that I have no mirrors near me here I'm just going to use a handheld mirror so you can just press that on and you have your phone, this is my niece and nephew and my mom, but you have your phone and it's like stuck onto that surface. I'm just gonna give it a shake there. This is really, really handy if you wanna be hands-free and you have a mirror or you have like a window near you that you want the light from the window. Um, so I really think that's great. I actually have a discount code for Slick Protect as well, so I'll leave that in the comments down below, but it's a really, really handy case and it's really firm as well. But what I have used for years to film on my phone is this right here. This is a lazy arm from Pennies. So it is meant to be like put it beside your bed and you can like, you know, watch your phone and stuff like that. You can get these for iPads as well, but it's just really, really handy. Um, you can get these on Amazon or anything. They're like phone mounts. So basically there's like a really, heavy duty clamp on the bottom and then there's a thing you can put your phone into on the top so i'm just gonna pop my phone in there and as you can see it's again it's really really firm in there and you can like move it around this bends so you can place this on a window i used to put this on the radiator and then i'd have the window in front of me and then the light would be facing me as well so this is like the best thing ever you can basically put it on anything and um, you can bring it outside you can do anything you want with it so it's really really handy i really recommend this right here i used to literally put this on the radiator and then put a lamp kind of on its side so that there was light on me and that's how i used to film and i'll put a picture i have a picture right here of my old like filming setup um but it worked it, it did the job so this is something that i still use this day when i'm doing like instagram tutorials here where like i don't have a mirror in front of me here it's just my like setup um but yeah really really handy and then the most important thing when it comes to filming a video is light light is everything that like it's it will change the video. So when you're starting out, you're better off to film kind of during daytime hours because you're gonna get that really beautiful fill of daytime light, which is like the best light. It's like a white, pure light. And then in pictures, you can take pictures in golden era, which is like when that sun is setting and it's like really amber tones. But when you start filming first, try and film with the daylight, which is what I used to do. Um, and if you need to take pictures or anything at night, these little lights are so handy. This is just one that I got in a press package, but it's a little portable light and you just stick it onto your phone and it lights your face a little bit. This one is not the best one. Um, I actually have one 
I just don't have it with me. The best one of these lights that I ever got was from a company called Glam Doll. They're an Irish company and I just don't have it with me here now. But what I'll do is I'll insert some shots of it um, when I'm editing the video. But the Glam Doll light, it has both cool and warm lights and it's really, really bright. It just slides right on top of your phone and I think it's the best one that I've ever had because with these lights, even though they're really, really handy, they're really white. They're very, very white, so they tend to wash you out a little bit. But with the um, Glam Doll one, you can mix cool and warm light to get a light that's like perfect for your complexion. So I just think that's like the best one that I ever got. So I'll slot that in here. I know people want to see my lighting. So this is my lighting setup. So I have two soft boxes and then I have my ring light and then another soft box. Then behind me is a kind of backdrop. So I'm gonna just set this up now on camera. So what you wanna do is I just loop it behind the ring light and I clip it to the ring light. Then I just open that up, clip her on, make sure I'm in frame. And there you are, there you have it. And um, this is how you could set up filming this a little bit close. If I was using this to film the way I would previously, I'd just put a mirror behind the camera. So I'd have a mirror kind of sitting right behind the camera so that I could see whether I was in focus. If I was showing a product, was the product in focus? So I would just make sure that I was in focus using a mirror behind the camera. And that would be how I would do my thing this is kind of what you'd be looking at setting it up like this so that you're close enough and always making sure as well that you're centered in the video so that when you are editing it's much easier now you can zoom and crop and things like that as well which is what i'm going to show you now but this is how i would set up so just making sure you have something really really steady realistically you could just lean the phone up against like i don't know like a, a candle or something, not, not lit. But if you want something that's gonna last you, like I've had this for like five years, um, this is brilliant. So I just wanna briefly touch on some actual tips for when you're using the camera as well. So I just open it up here, I have it here beside me, my messy, messy room. So when it comes to actually filming on the phone, first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your, um, your exposure is set right so you can select yourself and then you press on the screen so you just hold your finger on the screen and this thing will come up AE lock and then you set the exposure to the level that you want so that's the level where I'm not washed out and as I move the exposure is not going to move so you're not going to get that you know I have dark hair I'm wearing a dark top so if the light hits a certain way I will just be Casper the friendly ghost but I don't want that I do not want that. The Another thing as well is when you're taking a photo, you can choose the timer. So I have three seconds or 10 seconds, which is really handy because sometimes having your arm out in the photo is just not as like flattering. Whereas like if you're able to just rest, like if you're like that, your arm is up, all this kind of stuff. But if you're in like a rested position, it's much better. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, then as well there's like filters here that you can play with as well um, which I don't know I wouldn't really be playing with the filters too much but what you can do is if you take a picture you can go in straight away and you can edit it but you can f fix like color make it more like saturated you can you do like color saturation, contrast, black and white. You can mess with the light a little bit as well. So you want to brighten it, if you want to darken it. <laughs> you know, things like that as well. So there's a lot you can do with the photo in the actual photo app itself. And so then I'm going to show you just some of the apps that I like to use for editing photos. So for photo editing, I like to use a little bit of Facetune sometimes just to make sure everything is nice and like poppy in the picture and um, I like to use Pixart and Canva for creating thumbnails for videos I like to use story looks for my Instagram stories and um, I just feel like it's like a really cool like vibe okay excuse the outfit change and um, I was editing the video and I went through all my editing and all that stuff and I just felt that it wasn't as like concise as it could have been 
So I just wanted to pop back on here and show you how I edit. So I'm gonna mainly be voiceovering this because I'm gonna be doing it on my phone, but I'm gonna share my phone screen to you to show you what kind of editing apps that I use. So I'm just gonna go through it now. So then I'm gonna go into my video editing apps. And these are the apps that I use quite regularly. There is iMovie, which is come standard with iPhones, Kinemaster, Pocket Video, and Video Leap. These are all really, really, really handy uh, for editing videos. The, that green one there up in the corner, HTV2 cam. If you transfer videos from your camera to your phone via the Wi-Fi on your camera, they go into a thing called home videos on the iPhone. They don't go into the camera roll. So what you need to do is you need to save it. So you just select it and press save to camera roll. Currently Lemonade is in there because Lemonade is in iTunes. It's not actually in the camera roll. But if I want to save it to my camera roll, I could. Anyway, okay. So the main app that I used for editing when I was editing content was iMovie. So I'm going to go into iMovie and I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to go for movie because trailers you don't need that. So I'm going to create a new movie and then I'm going to select the content that goes into it. I just have loads of selfies. <laughs> um, so the content. So I'm going to go into video and I'm going to go all video and I'm going to select like to say some stories. So I'm going to select some stories. So just tick them. So select them and press the little tick and then I'm going to select some like side clips. I know I have like some longer like clips. I'm gonna pop in this one of me and Laura cause that's like wide as well. So I'm gonna create a movie. I have three items in the movie at the moment. So as you can see, they're just in our little timeline here. And between each one here, these little bits here are transitions. So I wanna remove the transitions because if we're gonna put in transitions, you should put them in yourself and you don't need transitions between every um, clip. So, right, first of all, this is your interface when it comes to iMovie. Um, and it's really, really easy to use. So once you select the clip, you're gonna be given a lot of options. So we have this little cut tool here. So that's used, so just say, I wanna split this right here. You can split it, okay? So this splits the clip into smaller sections. You can use this when you're like editing your footage down. So like usually I'll have a lot more footage than I actually need. So this is used for cleaning that down. So I can delete that footage there. Then just say if I select that and I want the audio from this to be on the next clip what I'll do is I'll detach it and there's my audio and then you can actually move that audio somewhere else so just say especially for points where just say in this video now if I was talking to you and I'm speaking about whatever but I want a clip of me doing eyeshadow to be over this clip which is going to be over it now but you can still hear my voice that's the effect that's going to be given by moving the audio like that so you want to detach the audio and then move it around this is really handy for voiceovers as well if you want to record the voiceover here or alternatively you can record the voiceover in voice memos you can also add voiceovers here, um, but you can add voiceovers in the iMovie app as well. I'll show you how now. So when you're in your movie, if you add down here a voiceover, you can actually record a voiceover with the clip. So it'll give you a little countdown and then you can say la 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 whatever you need to say stop it and that'll be your voiceover so that'll be your voiceover if you want to do voiceover tutorials so as i said these little lines here are transitions so if you want there to be a transition into the next image so there's a couple of different transitions then we move on to something else as well. So two kind of things as well about cropping the video. You can't really crop the video in this, but if you keep it centered, it's gonna fit into a square. But I'm gonna show you what I'd use to crop a later time. So just say this video here has been filmed to fit in stories. And because of that, when you put it into iMovie, it cuts the top and the bottom off. So what you wanna do is you wanna select the clip. And if you are keeping this in stories, 
you want to zoom all the way out and then so attractive and then when you put it into stories you can just zoom in and it will come back up to story size but if you want it to flip and be the size of an actual youtube video you just take your two fingers like this and you just flip it oh i'm still in zoom so you take your fingers like this and you just flip it and then it's going to fit into that little box there again you can zoom it and move it around so while you're zooming you can move around the image and then you're left with the zooming image and things like that as well if this was a still image right i want to add a still image so i'm just going to go photos and i'm going to go favorites and i'm going to add this okay so i'm going to add that okay when you add a still image, <laughs> can I just say, yes, bitch. Uh, when you add a still image, this effect goes on to it called Ken Burns. I don't know why it's called Ken Burns. Obviously some dude called Ken Burns invented it. But what it does is, I'll just play it for you now, is it kind of pans the image, which sometimes is okay. But nine times out of 10, if I'm using an image, but nine times out of ten, if I'm using an image, I want it to be still. So I'm going to go back in here, select it, and Ken Burns disabled. So you just tap that and Ken's, Ken Burns disabled. Alternatively, if you want it to pan, but you want to move where it starts. So the position to start, to say I want to start here. And then position to end, just say I want to start here, end here. That means that it's going to move that direction for me instead. So you can edit it, but most times, I'm just gonna turn it off. Within these settings down here then as well, you can like increase the time of a video. So you can make it slow, really, really slow-mo, or you can speed it up, up to two times. Sometimes I feel like that's not like still super, super fast, but you can speed it up a couple of times and it will be fine. Um, then also, I want to just show you as well. So just say for instance you're uploading this onto Instagram or Twitter or something like that. Having the correct thumbnail is like quite important because the thumbnail is what's going to draw people in to actually view your video. So you can search on Instagram. I'll show you. Video, video, video. Yeah. So just say here. So I'm going to select that clip. You can actually go and like get the cover so this is how you find the cover that you want but sometimes it's hard to like stop at the right point so in order to get the correct cover what you can do is you can go add photos and see those three little dots you click the three little dots and you go and put it in as a cutaway so you can add it as a cutaway and then I'm going to make it super, super short. So I'm going to make it like a second long. So literally when the thing starts, it's gone straight away. So it's like a second gone. But then when you upload it, that will be the image that will come up as your thumbnail. If you want to as well, just say I want to select a video here. I can go select and I can do picture in picture which is this one here and you can select that and you can move that around the screen if you want and zoom it in if you need to. You can also put it as a split screen which would be this kind of situation or you can do it as a green screen. Green screen is like a little bit more complex. Okay next step is you have a video. Obviously this video here is not like it ain't gonna win no Oscars, okay, is all I'm saying. But you have a video <laughs> and you just delete that as well. So it's like under a minute. So if you're on Instagram, you're doing under a minute. If it's on Instagram stories, you can go a bit longer. And if it's on IGTV, obviously you can go a bit longer again. But one minute is for Instagram posting. Um, so just say you have your one minute now and you've muted all the clips. So you can actually just mute all the clips so that you have like no sound especially if you're doing like makeup tutorials and um, and then comes to adding audio so audio is really really hard when it comes to like blogging and stuff like that as well because you can't use copyrighted music 
if you put copyright music on YouTube, you're going to get a copyright strike, which is actually going to three strikes and your account is suspended. Other accounts then, they'll mute your video. So Facebook mutes your video if it finds copyrighted content in it. Um, Instagram can remove your video if they find copyrighted content in it. So you just have to be really, really careful. There's two sources that I use to get music. So I use a website called Epidemic Sound, which is a subscription service, but I find the music on that is really, really good. And there's such a huge library and Alternatively, I use, um, other than that, I use a thing called No Copyright Sounds. Now, No Copyright Sounds is on YouTube. And what I would recommend doing is, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into their playlists and I'm going to go, I'm sorry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into their videos and I'm gonna go most popular because some of the songs are not good. Like, they're not not good, but some of the songs are very like, mm, 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 mm. and like, we just wanna avoid that a little bit. Anyway, so these are like their most popular songs. Songs that I've probably used in some of my videos before. Like, I've definitely used this song on and on in my videos before. Like, you've definitely heard this song. Anyway, apologies. Okay, so they are some of the apps that I, like, I use that. So in order to download the songs, you do, in order to download these songs, you do need to have a computer to download them and then put them on your computer. But if you don't have a computer, what you can do is you can screen record the audio. Um, so you can screen record the audio, um, like I just do now, I'm screen recording on the phone. So just say if it's a minute long, you can screen record the audio and then you can go into your movie. You can go into your movie and you can add, and I'm just gonna go to like a video that I've already added. So you can add, so I'm gonna pick this one here. So you can select the video of the screen recorded song. You can go audio only. And that's gonna give you this. In a video I'm trying to keep this as like straight as possible if so just say in this video here okay just say that was our intro I'm gonna split it okay I'm gonna split that audio and myself and Laura are going to start talking in a minute so just say I never muted this clip and I'm gonna put it back up to 100 okay 107 whatever same same and then for the audio I'm gonna bring that down to about 30 and then I'm gonna pull this so that it like fades down. And same on this here, I'm gonna pull it so it just fades down a little bit. So you're gonna end up with this kind of today is a five minute makeup challenge. The regrets are starting to kick in already. And we have some lucky bags and goodies here. But the thing is, it'll still play the audio in the background, but just at a lower level. Um, and that just, yeah. So, okay. So we have our clip now, okay. So I'm gonna export it. So I'm gonna go, ooh, and just export that clip. Save video. And I'm gonna go 1080p, you don't need 4K. Don't fool yourself, continue. So now that we have our video, we can crop it. Okay, so the next app that I'm gonna use is called Video Leap. Now you can edit on Video Leap. Like, Video Leap is, oh, so many ads. Video Leap you can't edit on. You do have to pay for Video Leap. You can edit on it, but it's a little bit more difficult. So I would recommend starting on iMovie. So I'm gonna just select my video. So I'm gonna just select my video, add to project. Okay, and I'm gonna go Canvas. So I'm gonna format that. So this gives you a couple of different options. So it gives you 16.9, which is like YouTube size, 
11 which is square 916 which is IG stories and then you can go 34 34 is the size that I do my videos on Instagram because they take up more space on the timeline so I'm just going to select that there and then I'm going to bring this and just crop it in to that obviously it's quite zoomed fit fill so I just want to fill so basically what I did there is I go into transform and I go into fill and then that's going to just zoom it all in so there's our video then in that 16.9 format okay if you're going to be putting it on IGTV you have a couple of different options here you can either film it on your phone which is going to make sure that it's like in the same dimensions as IG IGTV, edit it on something like this where you can fit it into that box. So with this, you can option to fit it into um, the size of an IGTV. So IGTVs are a little bit thinner, so you just have to be a bit more careful about how you edit it. So what I would generally do with this is, I would do a color on the background. Okay, so let's just say red, okay. And then what I would do, I would transform the clip and just do it like this so that it fits in the thing. So what I do is I would kind of zoom it a little bit just to get rid of the edges. Rid of the edges, you can, pop in, you can pop in an image in the background as well if you want to. And that's going to fit better into the IGTV if you're filming on a camera. Because it's quite difficult because even if I was eyes on IGTV now, I'd have to be like here to make sure that I was like in the clip. So you'll see most of my IGTVs have like a frame around them. So in this as well, you can add like some glitches. So you can kind of play around with it a little bit as well. When it comes down to it, you kind of have to sit down and figure it out yourself as well to a certain extent because it is a little bit fiddly, but once you get the hang of it, it it's not that difficult. So. Um, I hope I answered all your questions here about basic editing on the phone. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know and I'll try my best to answer them in the comments down below. Um, but that is basically how I would have edited my videos up to Christmas of last year. Um, obviously, it's a bit different now, but... Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team here. If I can do it, anyone can do it. And yeah, so this will be the start of your blogging influencing career. If you have any questions, even down below, make sure you follow me at jen.maris on Instagram and I will see you all very soon.